Hi, this is Sean Rutledge from the Cute Company, just finishing up a two-day hackathon in which we decided to demo some of the latest features in Cute Quick 3D. So we find ourselves in a dark corridor with a door in front of us. Lars and Tom Doris have been working on multimedia, so we actually have sound working again in Qt uh, Multimedia and Qt 6. And yeah, so on the screen on the door, that's a texture which is part of the spaceship model. We, we downloaded some parts, so this door and the walls to the sides of it were one model, and then Powell opened it up in Blender and separated out the door panels into separate meshes so that we're able to apply animations to those. So the, the texture includes this screen with a handprint on it, and in front of that I put a 3D model of a rectangle which has a tap handler. Um, when you click the tap handler, then that starts the animation and plays the sound. And that's how the door opens. And actually we use this trick quite a bit, putting a 3D model with a rectangle um, built-in mesh. Powell created the frame in Blender, made a resizable frame with components so that um, like the 3D equivalent of a 9 patch, you can have a resizable frame. Anyway, we put uh, controls text edit in there and um, so I'm able to edit this text. And um, so I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Powell, Eskil, and Inho on this hackathon project. And one of the other things that Powell did was created a um, 3D model of a screen, which is actually curved. And then we're using morphing to demonstrate that new feature that you're able to unroll the screen. It's curved and translucent and um, we're able to show applications on it because this is a Wayland compositor. So it's actually a Wayland IVI compositor and this particular screen has IVI ID1. So whenever I push the 3D buttons on this keyboard model here, I launch an application setting the environment variable to IVI ID1, launching a queue process that creates the Wayland executable and, and then the output is redirected to a texture which is mapped onto this 3D surface here, which is also translucent. And then I have this button to hide the screen, and you notice when I press the button again, you see the particle effects, right? Behind the screen there's a particle system which makes it look like the screen is being created just in time with some advanced nanotechnology. Um, I can also click this button to launch the graph. Notice that when I click the button, it actually changes the Z height. And in this case, the IVI ID is a different one, which corresponds to this text um, edit in the front of the room. Which um, So we covered up the text by mapping a Wayland surface onto that. And this is uh, our example application that we ship. It's the graph example, it actually uses a shader effect to draw the graph. So we still have that working through Wayland. Well, let's see what else is on this um, spaceship here. So I'll walk to the back of the room. Bonk! You notice I run into the walls. That's uh, Eskel has been working on collision detection, that aspect of the physics. So this um, character controller is able to move the character around and you notice a little bit of a head bouncing effect. And um, it doesn't let me escape out into space, at least not from this part of the ship. So on this screen I'm going to launch terminal. That's actually console. That works fine. I'm able to focus the focus the console. And on this screen, I'm going to launch Hello. But actually, that one also has a different IVI ID, so I made that one appear on this other screen over here to the side. And um, that's another example that we ship with Qt Quick, the text example. It has this Hello World animation inside. So you see that animation works fine as well. On this screen, we have something already running, but this isn't a Wayland application. So the way we're doing these screens is, again, we have the 3D model with a rectangle. This one has an emissive white color. And then on top of that, I have a black rectangle, which blocks the color, the emissivity, and then I have orange text, which appears to glow in the dark because the, some of the light is getting through from the backlight. So, so it acts exactly like an LCD backlight. Whatever you put on top of there 
will be backlit. Um, and then I also have a tap handler on there. And um, again, you know, I wanted to demonstrate particles some more. And I thought, well, this ship needs some sort of a defensive weapon, right? So I started creating a kind of shotgun using particles the same as we did on the desk behind the screen. And I thought, oh, that looks kind of cheesy. And I thought, oh, geez, what an idea. So behold the power of our new weapon, the cheese blaster. As long as I hold it down, I get 20 cheese wedges per second. If I tap it, then I get a burst because there's a burst mode as well in the particle system. And those are actually um, 3D models of cheese wedges, which again, I downloaded. So particles are not limited to, sp to sprites anymore. You can actually use 3D models. And um, now I'm going to do the usual thing that we do in every Wayland demo. We always show that you can run the Wayland compositor inside itself. So let's initiate inception mode. And when that starts up, well, we have a little visual glitch. It seems like the frames of the nested compositor aren't being rendered in time for compositing in this one or something like that. But it's not too bad. And if I click in there, I can actually use the character navigator to move around in this scene as well. And I can still come over to the door and if I can get it to sit still on the there, and I can walk over to the corridor. And over here, uh, it's possible to walk out into space because we don't have the collision detection implemented. So, um, just let that go. And I think that's pretty much it. Thanks everybody for your help and thanks for Powell for this idea to do this hackathon in the first place. See you later.